Well, let's speak now to GB News's very own Calvin Robinson about this. Thank you for joining us, Calvin. I mean, one of the things I worry, because I mean, Grant Shapps has said that there is some loopholes that potentially needs to be closed in order to prevent vandals. But even if we disagree, or some people might disagree with this result, there is a worry that there could be a counter reaction to push, few, uh, pr push through illiberal policies um, against people protesting. I mean, do you worry about that at all? I do. And we should always uh, be cautious whenever the government says they want to clamp down on protesting. As we saw last year around COVID, they wanted to really stamp it out so that they couldn't see any uh, be held to account. And we don't want that at all. But what this is, is a loophole in the law around criminal damage. Now, I'm not a lawyer and I've taken a lot of stick on Twitter for commentating on this case, or commenting on this case uh, over the last couple of days. Uh, but the, the clause is quite clear that to, for it to be criminal damage, um, there has to be damage to the property. Okay, so we've saw that we all saw that that was on video. Uh, the property has to belong to someone else. It clearly didn't belong to the protesters, um, and there has to be intent to damage or reckless behaviour with no care for damage. We saw that. We saw all three of those clauses being met. The fourth one, the loophole, is that the defendant does, does, can have a legal excuse for damaging the property, and that's what we're seeing. In that these four, the Colston four, have said they had a legal excuse for damaging the property, and that is to prevent further crime, to prevent hate crime as if a statue in itself can be a hate crime. Now, and I've said on record that I think this sets a very pre bad precedent, and I'm not talking about a legal precedent, I'm talking about a general precedent in the country, in that if we say it's okay for you to damage public property or other people's property if you think it's offensive, which is what a hate crime is, therefore anyone can knock down any statue or any public memorial that they feel uncomfortable with. And um, Darren Grimes put out a uh, a, a witty tweet yesterday, should we all go and knock down Karl Marx's statue because his ideology has killed millions of people around the world? Of course, it was tongue-in-cheek, you never would do it. But this is the problem, is it? Isn't it? If, if we see something that we can claim is offensive, we now have a loophole in the law to say, yeah, I'm going to go and um, be a vigilante and rather than follow the democratic process. And this is why I'm so upset about this case, because these thugs, these vandals, these rioters had a democratic process. They could have either stood for office, they could have voted for different people in Bristol mm -hmm. in the local elections, or they could have had their say through petitions and protests, which I know that some of them have done. But the problem is they didn't do that. They chose unlawful action. And they got away with it because the jury looked at the case through a political lens, and it's outrageous. Cameron, I think you make an important point about maybe there is a conversation then as a society to move this conversation on and look at whether or not we have enough local democracy within society where ordinary people can actually have platforms and ways in which they can affect change um, in their local community. But what do you make of the kind of counter argument who, who says that the Colston situation is very specific in the sense that um, he was someone that some people would argue his his flaws outweighed his achievements and that his case is very specific and shouldn't necessarily be extrapolated to worry about all of our statues and we should look at that on its own terms specifically well it's very subjective isn't it because his flaws were terrible you know he was involved in the slave trade that's an evil way of making money i think we would all agree with that um and but if we look at his what were his pros and i'm not saying his pros outweigh the, the cons but his pros were he set up arms houses hospitals charities funded the local area a lot of the infrastructure around uh, bristol it was set up by him and his family and the legacy um so i'm not saying they balance out but what i'm saying is you have to look at history holistically and who says where the pros and cons outweigh each other. Look at Winston Churchill. I happen to think he was a hero. I think he was one of the most important, most significant figures in preventing fascism in the 20th century. Some people will say, no, he's a bigot and a racist. Who gets, to, who gets the final say on how bad or how good a person is? Because that's not what a statue is about anyway. It's not to say this person was uh, a saint, because even the saints were not perfect. It's, it's to say this person made a contribution to this part of the world, and we put this up to remember that. But we can also remember the bad things that we did. And I know Colston had a plaque already, and I know there were already petitions in place, but that's another part of the democratic process. And what these people fail to see is that, yes, they might have done petitions, they might have held polls, but they didn't win them. And if you don't win, you have to have loser's consent in a democracy. Just because you've gone through the process doesn't mean you're going to get your own way. And if you don't get your own way, you do not get to tear down statues. You do not get to just tear things down and destroy things because that's throwing a tantrum. No, I, I think, you know, many people will echo your sentiments, Calvin. I mean, one of the things that I worry about as well is that, you know, these people are claiming to be doing this, you know, for, for anti-racism and so on. And it, it seems to be premised on a very patronising idea of, of ethnic minority people and black people in particular, that we cannot handle the complexities of history, that, you know, we walk past a statue that, you know, may have been, uh, someone may have been involved in the slave trade and we cower in fear and, and, and we, we can't live within society unless all of them are removed. I mean, sometimes I think that actually it's 
is this way of thinking, this racial thinking, that is doing more damage mm. to, to race relations in this country than otherwise? Well, I don't know the racial makeup of the Colston Four, but they didn't look very BLM to me. Um, I haven't personally walked past any statue and taken offence of it because of the colour of my skin. I don't know if you can say the same, Anaya. I, I would assume that you haven't really taken much offence to inanimate objects because you're not that kind of sensitive person. But this is the problem. Are people really walking past these memorials and these statues and say, oh my gosh, I can no longer live the rest of my day. This is horrible. Or are people taking offence on behalf of other people? Is it middle class uh, yeah. people with what we call white guilt that are getting involved and saying, oh, those poor black people cannot handle that. Let's get rid of it for them. It's passionate. Well, and, 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 well, and actually, has it now properly infiltrated our legal system in that sense, Kevin? Because you mentioned there about, about the jury. Can you imagine maybe... If if they'd have gone, right, OK, well, you're, you're guilty of this, right? And actually... Yeah, exactly, probably, exactly. Yeah, and, and, so, I mean, and so actually it's, it's got involved. It's right in there, isn't it, in our legal system? It is. And they, of course they would be afraid of the consequences of their actions, if the jury, if they had declared that these thugs were guilty, because the whole of Black Lives Matter movement would have been in uproar and we would have seen more oh, riots and oh. more protests and maybe their lives would have been at risk. They'd have but found also, out who the jury you know, was and they'd have, yeah, exactly, exactly. But there was the quote that, you know, you want to be on the right side of history and that's a very dangerous quote to throw at a jury who are making a decision whether someone committed criminal damage or not, not whether they were on the right side of politics and that is the problem. And I do want to address for clarity and for, you know, to, mm. to be completely open that um, our news station was investigated at the time of this case uh, for content that we were found not guilty of content yeah. for discussing the matter. And I just want to put that out there because people are saying, how can you discuss this matter without saying that you guys were looked into? Yeah, we were looked into. We were not found guilty of content. Mm. We are able to express our opinions on this matter. Thank you very much. Well, good stuff. And you certainly did that rather well, Calvin. As always, Calvin Robinson there. Our very own, ladies and gentlemen. Good stuff. Thank you for that. Wizzing us through loads of comments already.